Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has now been out for two solid weeks. And while I love the movie, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Just some random things, but I couldn't talk about them when it came out because, you know, spoilers. But the film's been out long enough now, so I'd like to say whoever wanted to see it has seen it now at this stage. Right. Yeah, I love the movie because it was made by uh, Sam Raimi. He also made um, the Evil Dead movies. He made a few other horror movies like Drag Me to Hell. He's most known though for the Spider-Man movies. But the thing is, you can obviously tell with this movie, he missed making horror movies, so he just unloaded with it. Zombie Strange was class. And even like the opening scene of the, um, that eye getting stabbed, the big massive eye, that was awesome. There weren't as many cameos in the movie as we thought there were gonna be. We were expecting a lot, we got a little bit. I don't think we were wrong to expect like all those cameos given what happened in No Way Home and in Loki but I'm glad I knew that before going in because I know a lot of people who didn't know that and um, were very disappointed. I can't say I blame them. But then again like you don't want to just have things in your film for the sake of having it. You know it has to have a purpose, it has to have meaning. Let's talk about the cameos we actually did get. First, there was Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, played by John Krasinski. Yeah, we, we had a feeling for a while that he'd be, he'd be playing that role, and it's nice to be confirmed, he is playing the role. World's smartest man alive, yet he gives away that other guy's weakness, the mouth guy's weakness. Not so smart now, is he? It made for a cool Matrix reference, though. Yeah, he, John Krasinski would also be directing the new Fantastic Four film. That's pretty cool. It was supposed to be John Watts, but apparently... He dropped out because he's supposed to make a Star Wars TV show. Should be interesting. I already talked about the mouth guy. Let's talk about Captain Marvel. It's a, I forget her name, but she played 007 in No Time to Die. She was great in that movie. She was also in Captain Marvel. She played one of her companions. And I hate to say it, I thought she was a better Captain Marvel than Brie Larson, even though she was only in the movie for like five minutes. And for some reason, I don't think I'm the only person who thinks that. Then you have uh, Peggy Carter as Captain America. That was amazing. Because um, yeah, the movie actually tied in a lot to What If, two particular episodes, the episode where she became Captain America and the Doctor Strange episode, which was so, so sad. Her death scene was brutal. But again, like it's done like a horror film. It was class. I know, I'm a blood-hungry psychopath. And of course, the final cameo, the most important one, the one we actually knew was going to happen because they spoiled it in the trailers, but we're still happy when it happened. Patrick Stewart as Professor Xavier. He came on, we saw the wheelchair, we briefly heard the X-Men cartoon theme. That was amazing. He now has three death scenes. One in Last Stand, one in Logan, and now one in this movie. Three very different death scenes. But all three of them work, for what each of them is a... Uh, trying to be. If Patrick Stewart has said he'd love to play this role till the day he dies, I don't know if, um, when they move forward with their X-Men reboot, I don't know if he should still consider playing him given how old he is, but you never know. We'll just see what happens. There were other cameos too, but the, the last one I'm gonna talk about was Bruce Campbell as the pizza guy. Yeah, they they're go to a world where green means stop, red means go, and their pizza is served in a bowl. He plays the pizza stand guy. Oh, that was hilarious. Um, my dad didn't know who he was, he couldn't figure out why people were so like, surprised and happy by this. He's not a horror movie person, so that's probably why. Scarlet Witch was the villain! We all thought she wasn't gonna be, like, but she was. Ah, I, I was a bit disappointed at first, but they did lots of really cool things with her as the villain. This is the movie where she really becomes the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, we all thought like Chiwetel Ejiofor's character from the first film was going to be the villain because like it was set up in that credit scene and they do acknowledge he did try to do all that stuff he set out to do. So it just happened off screen. I don't know. I was kind of disappointed by that. But either way, like if you're going to subvert expectations, give us something that's just as good in return. I think they did that. Oh yeah, she, she definitely ain't dead. That, that is definitely, that's one thing for sure. Be like if they were gonna kill her off, they wouldn't. They wouldn't do it like that. 
I've loved Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch ever since she was in Avengers Age of Ultron. I think I love the way she plays that role. I just think she's a great character. And you know what? I think she should get her own movie. Just saying. Do I even need to mention Benedict Cumberbatch? He's just, he's the best. He's the actor I associate with Sherlock Holmes. He loves this character. Like he, um, he didn't want to come back to do the last season of Sherlock because he just finished filming Doctor Strange. That's where his heart was. And you can tell, like, he's still in it. I'd say he'd probably want to play this role till the day he dies. Similar to Patrick Stewart with Xavier. There's just certain roles they were just born to play. So those were, yeah, those were the, the main things I want to talk about the movie. I love it. I do recommend it. What do you think of the movie? And do you think it's one of Marvel's top five, maybe top ten movies? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, just one other random thing. Was it just me or did the opening scene remind anyone else of Rick and Morty you know like the way they're running was it just me okay fair enough